Alright, so it's been a few weeks since I've uh, uploaded a video for Kettlebells. Uh, my daughter was born five weeks ago and uh, she's been keeping us a little bit busy. So it's been uh, cutting into my time for uh, YouTube videos involving Kettlebells. But we're back this week. It is third, fourth week in March. Uh, today we're going to work a little bit on double kettlebell swings um, and different exercises involving two kettlebells at the same time. All right. So the first one we're going to work on um, is going to be that double kettlebell swing to catch. So as always, uh, go through your kettlebell warm-up series uh, in the, the other YouTube video we have out. That's going to help warm up your hips, warm up your back, core, all the muscles you're really going to use going into any kettlebell, kettlebell exercises. So, once you've gone through your whole kettlebell warm-up, um, you can include the, uh, the pyramid swings, the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, into that warm-up as well if you'd like. Otherwise, you can get right into your double kettlebell swings, which we're going to start right now. So, with a double kettlebell swing, you're going to grab two kettlebells of the same size, all right, and you're going to hold these right here in the front. Now, when you come through normal kettlebell swing, you've only got one kettlebell's width to go between your legs. So, with two of them, as you can imagine, you've got to take a little bit of a wider stance. All right? So that's going to help you be able to get both of them through. The other thing to consider is the fact that if I took both of these and lined them up with the, with the palms facing straight back like that, it's not going to allow me really a lot of room to go through my hips. So as I go through with that double kettlebell swing, I'm going to rotate my thumbs backwards and allow the kettlebell to swing up on the underside of my inner thigh. All right? So it's going to look like this. You start rocking forward, and you're just going to stick both back like that. Butt out, swing through. Rotate those thumbs and back out. So every time I go under my hips, my thumbs point straight back, and I drive back up. Straight back, drive back up. All right? My feet are a little bit wider. My knees are out a little wider as well. I rotate palms up, back. Palms up, back. Keeping that posture tall the whole time. All right? So, practicing a few of those two-handed swings before you start moving into some of the more advanced exercises. All right? So from the side, it's going to look like posture back and swing through. Back tall, swing through. We want the same hip position, same swing coming through. Good. Butt out, snap the hips. Butt out, snap the hips. All right? So, practice those to start, and then from there, once you get comfortable with the swing motion, then we can move into our next uh, exercise, which is going to be a swing up to a racked catch. All right, now that you've warmed up your swings, now it's time to get into a uh, swing to a catch position. It's basically the same as our normal kettlebell. Single arm, right? We swing through, up to racked catch. All right, you're always catching that rack position. So your th forearm and thumb right up against your chest creating that little cradle for the bell to sit in, okay? So essentially we're going to do that with the same thing now, only we've got two kettlebells to deal with. So posture's tall, all right? We're going back into that basic swing position, swing through, snap up, and double rack catch, okay? Posture tall from here, we're always pushing out and away into our arc, pull it up close to your body into a rack catch. Push out and away, swing up, and catch, all right? From the side, Snapping the hips back, we push out into our arc, swing through, snap up close to the body and catch. Butt out hips, snap up and catch. Out, snap up and catch. All right? So once we're in our rack position here, there's a couple things we can do. We can practice. Start out by practicing about 12 or so of a swing up to catch. All right? Swing up to catch. After your 12th one, let's do 12 squats now. Posture tall, and you're going to squat down, drive back up. One, down, two, three, keeping that posture tall, butt out, four, down, drive up, five, six, seven, keep the chest up high, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good, now I'm going to practice 12 presses. From here, double rack press. We come up one, back down, press and rotate out, rotate and turn back into rack position. Wrist rotate out to press, back down. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Nine, as they get heavier, you can add a little hip pop. Ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, from here, come back, swing, and bring them to the ground. All right? So, the first set through, twelve swing to rack, right? Twelve squats, twelve presses. Practice that like two, maybe two times through, um, just to get the motions down. And then after that, we'll set uh, all of them together and put it into one motion. All right. So, now that we've practiced a couple times through with the swings, the squats, and the presses all individual, now we're going to put it into one motion. All right, we'll do 12 of those straight. So, grabbing your kettlebells, we're starting out, posture's tall, we swing back, up to rack, squat, up to press, back down, push out, swing, catch, squat, press, back down, swing, catch, whoops, <laughs> swing, catch, squat, press, that's four, down, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, we're going to work through all those 12 times through, and then again, you can do two to three sets, putting it all together like that. Taking it anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute rest in between each set, trying to get that heart rate up, trying to work all your muscles together, always keeping that core tight so it stabilizes all that power from the hips straight up through to the upper body. All right, great. So, our next exercise we're going to work on is that windmill position, all right? So your standard kettlebell windmill would be up overhead, elbows locked, turn the toes pointing away, and then we kick that hip out, slide down, so we're lined up, hands over hands, and then we drive and come back up. Kicking that hip out, slide down, drive and come back up to neutral, okay? So what we're going to do now is to do a double kettlebell one, you're going to line this Second kettlebell right up here on the inside of your ankle on the side you're going to go to. All right, you can either snap this one up to a clean and press, right? Or you can swing right up into a snatch to start. Okay, and then you're going to kick that hip out. We're going to slide that hand down. As you reach the bottom, you're now going to grip your bell and you're going to drive up through it. Core is tight. Now we're kicking that hip out and driving up through those. All right, hip goes out and then drive up through it. All right, always packing that shoulder down, eyes up on your bell that's up, drive up through it. Kicking that hip out, drive up through. All right, try to hold that balance, belly button tight. That extra weight on the bottom is gonna challenge that core a little bit more. So we come down, all right, after you've done about 12 of those, just put the other bell down on the inside of that ankle Turn your angle. Now we're going to snap and come up on the other side. Posture's tall. We're going to kick that hip out. Palm is facing out away from you. And we slide down that inner thigh until we grab our bell and we drive up through it. So, posture's up tall. We kick that hip out. Slide down. Drive up through. Eyes up on your bell. Hip out. Drive up through it. Sliding down drive up through. So you're going to feel that outer hip doing work and then drive it up with the obliques in the outer hip. Posture comes down and drive back up. All right, all the way down. And then you can set that one down on the last one, come up with it without it, bring the other one down to rack, back to the floor. All right, practice again. Anywhere from 10 to 12 on each side. If you if you feel like you're fatiguing after 8, 9, 10, if you can't get all the way to 12, you may want to lighten up the bells a little bit 
or you just want to shorten up your reps. You want to go to fatigue, especially at the beginning it's more important to practice the form rather than really pushing heavy weights. As you get more comfortable with the form and getting everything in the right place, then obviously you can up the weights a little bit. Alright, the last exercise we're going to work on here today is going to involve sitting and lying down on the ground doing a, a chest or horizontal press with your kettlebell. Um, there's not a lot of times where you do a lot of horizontal pressing um, with the kettlebell exercises, um, but for example with a Turkish getup, it's important to get those muscles in your chest and your shoulders strong enough to lift a bell off the ground. So when we're in a Turkish getup position, lying down, we've obviously got to get that bell off the ground to start out. Right, so we're end up in this position here. Right, so there's this motion from here to press up. You know, it's not utilized a lot, but we still can work on it. We still can make it strong. So we're going to start out by doing alternating kettlebell presses. This is also going to be a bit of a, a unilateral uh, contraction, you know, stabilizing in your trunk. Um, so that's going to help us out with that. So I'll start out lying down like front side, so you can see with a motion of the bells, and then I'll lie to the side, so you can see where the lineman is. Alright, so when you lie down for the first time, you're going to lie down with your bells on either side of you. You want to start by rolling all the way over, grab your bell, palm over, and then pull it into your chest. All right? Then you're going to roll to the other side, grab that bell, pull it into your chest. All right? Now lying down flat, we're going to bring these right up over our chest, and then we're going to bring it up, and we're going to press both of them up straight off the ground at a time. All right? So they're directly up over our chest right now. Shoulder blades are packed down and back. Now I'm going to lower one down, bring it right towards my chest, touch the elbow to the ground lightly, and then as I come up on that side, I'm going to come down on the other side. So I press and come up, press and come up. Keep my shoulder blades flat against the ground, and I'm just alternating my press motion. I'm trying to lock my core in tight. I'm not letting my hips shift from side to side. I'm just locking it in, shoulder blades are backing down, and I'm pressing from the chest, and the anterior shoulder capsule. Triceps are doing some work as well. Knuckles point straight up towards the ceiling. And I alternate back and forth. Pressing through it. Good. Doing it again. Anywhere from 10 to 12 on each side, depending on the weight. Obviously, as you go heavier weights, you can go less reps. But we want to have both moving at the same time. So as one's going up, the other one's coming down. Okay? Then bringing it in. Then roll it to one side, put your bell down, roll it back to the other side, put the other bell down. All right? So you're going to feel that across the chest. All right? You're going to feel it into the front of the shoulder. But you're also going to feel it across here because that piston style, that alternating movement, is going to make the trunk want to rock from side to side. You've got to really focus on contracting those anti-rotational muscles to keep everything nice and steady as you press through it. All right? So from the side, turn it over and give you an idea of what that looks like. So I'm down, got my bell, picking it up, to my other bell, picking it up, back down. Now I'm going to press them both up together to start, get them locked in place. Wrists directly over my shoulders, directly over my elbows, bring them one side down and press it up, alternating back and forth. Notice how I'm touching the weight down lightly. Definitely don't want to come down fast because you can really slam that elbow. And depending on how heavy the weight is, you can cause some problems in your forearm, too. Just press it straight up and down, alternating back and forth, keeping that core tight, trying not to rotate side to side. Punch it straight up to the ceiling. Good. When you're done, bring it in, roll one to the side, and to the other side. And then you'll be all done. Alright, so, those are going to be your three exercises for today, all using both kettlebells at the same time. Practice through some of those until you get used to it. Then at the end of the circuit, or at the end of the workout, you can put that all into a circuit and do one complete flow from start to finish. Again, uh, 12 reps if you're lightweight, or if you're using a lightweight. Um, and then as you go heavier on the weights, you can drop the reps down. Try to avoid going much lower than six reps per exercise. And at that point, you've got a, a bell weight that's really going to be heavy. Um, but six reps should be your minimum on these, so we can keep that you know, focus on strength and building up some power. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, again, I'll be able to get some more time to, uh, to get more of these up. But uh, stay tuned. I'm sure there'll be another one pretty soon. And as always, uh, live rugged.